Uh, my name is Shannon Rubin Whitney. I'm the staff accountant at Rubin Engineering. So, start off telling us a little bit about some of your fondest memories of your grandfather at work. <laughs> it began, probably my first memory was when I was really little, and I think my dad actually did a lot of work in this building. And he would bring me in when I was three, four, something like that. And I remember his office actually, you know, the office over there, he had a couch with a TV. And I remember I was so excited to come into this big building and see my grandfather and watch TV, you know, watch TV on the couch and just hang out with him. Because, you know, usually with families, you only see your grandparents during the holidays or special dinner. So it was always so much fun to just come in and be able to see him at his huge desk and everything. It's always the first memory that comes to mind for me. <laughs> we always joke about it. Just um, we we spent a lot of time together when I was little. Um, my family has been going down to Florida for a week every year since I can remember. So I just always remember how um, I would pull him into a, one of the bedrooms and we would put on Lion King and he would always fall asleep and I'd poke him and say, Papa, you're missing the best part! And I'd always wake him back up, but of course the best part's the entire movie. So, <laughs> it, you know, it was a continuous just... So that's always what we joke about. So the first memory of him is always... Okay, so that's you, always pops you, in my mind. You studied college? Yes, yes. I went to George Mason University and I studied accounting and finance, but I ended up getting my finance degree. And, and there's a, you, you said you function as the accountant. Are you the CFO or are you, will you no. be the CFO? Or what, um, maybe one day I'll be the CFO. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm only 27, so I still have a lot to learn, a lot I have to, um, yeah, a lot I have to learn. But eventually, one day, hopefully, I could so become the CFO. you enjoy the business and you yes. expect to continue in the business? Yes, absolutely. I, um, my mom works for another company, however, I always looked up to her and the way that she worked with money and the way that she was just so intelligent and her numbers and everything. And you and have to mention your mom's name in the company. Her name works. is, <laughs> my mother is Sandra Rubin. She works for Keystone Plus. She's a CFO over there. So I just always, I always just loved the way that her mind worked and so that's what I always wanted to pursue. And um, so, I just, plus not to mention working at a smaller company, I, I really enjoy that. You get to see everybody, you get to meet everybody. It really becomes more of a individual one-on-one -on -one experience compared to when it's a larger company and you hardly know the person sitting next to you. So when you go around Washington, D.C. and you see all of these famous buildings, you know your grandfather was behind it, what do you think? It's, it's pretty crazy to think about. Um, you know, it, it's such a historical area and every single building has meaning, has some kind of important memory to somebody, and, to somebody. And to know that he was a part of it is just amazing. I remember in high school we had, uh, for our history class, we had to go to the Holocaust Museum. And I remember going there and you know, of, of course everybody cries that goes to the Holocaust Museum because of how powerful it is. And I got home and I was telling my parents all about it and they said, y you know Papa did that, right? I said, no. I was like, I had no idea he was the one. It's, it's so great to know that he has had such an impact on so many people's experiences. One thing more is the future. What, what do you see? How do you see this? How's the company been? How, where's the company going? Uh, the company's growing yearly. It's doing really well. Hopefully, with between Joey and I, we're going to be able to continue and just make it larger and more customers and hopefully continue it so maybe our children at one point will be able to take over from us. We're here with Mr. Angel Rubin, uh, CEO of Rubin & Janeiro. Um, Mr. Rubin is a longtime businessman in the uh, Washington, D.C. region. Um, Angel, when did you get here? You came, you're, you're a first generation Washingtonian. How did that happen? Um, I was uh, raised in Spain, born and raised in Spain. and. Uh, um, I was 14 years old when I first met my father because he had been in the States all these years through the uh, depression and all that. 
So he asked me what I want to do, and I, um, I asked him that I, I told him that I want to be a lawyer, and uh, he said, I don't have the money to send you to university, and then he said, uh, what else do you want to do? I said, a doctor said the same thing. And I was so disappointed that my father all this time in America, I thought all the Americans were rich. So I thought I was very disappointed that he didn't have the money to send me to school. He said, what else? He said, hey, Dad, there's only one thing left. He said, what is that? Take me to America. He said, I can do that. He was a U.S. citizen, so he was able to uh, bring me to America. And this was 1951. I came to, uh, to the United States. I was 16 years old. I couldn't speak a word of English. Uh, I started working as a laborer in, in Washington, D.C. area, by the way. In a, in a bridge we built uh, uh, at uh, Route 50 over Kenilworth Avenue. That's a long time ago. Wow. <laughs> but I was making $1.25 an hour. So um, I was very happy, but the only thing is I felt like I was on vacation every day because they only work eight hours. In Spain, I used to work on, from sun up to sundown. So, to me, it was like a vacation every day. So, you, you, stone masonry is in your blood, is in, in that area of Galicia. Most of most of the uh, grown-up men were stone masons, or I say, perhaps seventy or eighty percent of the men were stone masons. It was 1960. I decided to go in business, uh, and uh, I called the owner of the company, which was uh, uh, the guy that I love, very nice person. And I called him to tell him the news that I wanted to uh, start a business. As soon as I finished his work, I started my own company with Fred Gennaro. And um, the rest- Ruben Engineer. Ruben Engineer. And I told Fred, he was the oldest uh, of the two, and I said, Fred, I want you to be the president. And he said, no, 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 I'm not good for president. You gotta be the president. I said, okay, okay. So um, we started um, very simple. I only had $10,000 in my bank, and uh, he put up another $10,000, and this is the way we started the company. The start, we started with the stonework. And um, small jobs, as a subcontractor. And to work out pretty good. I mean, we work ourselves. We had some guys that uh, used to work for the same company I did. They came with us, and we had we had three uh, things uh, as a goal to for our business. Number one, do good work. Number two, pay your bills on time. Number three, make a dollar in the process. We didn't want to be millionaires. We don't have no ambition of such a grandeur thing. We just thought they would do it. They would make us grow up. That's all. That was our secret. Well, it's not easy to start your own business. What was the greatest obstacle you had to overcome? Well, the, uh, the, the, the greatest object was that the fact that nobody knew sauce as a, as a business. And when you start a new business, you say, who the heck are you? Where do you come from? What are your experience? And that applied to most of them. Luckily, I knew a couple of contractors in the area which I then work for the other company. They knew me. So those guys trust me 100%. But there was very few of them. I remember you as a founder, one of the founding group of the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the, I tell you, there was a coincidence. We went to a meeting. Uh, they had a meeting of the, when they start, tried to start the you talking about Hakka? Yes. Well, no, no, no. I'm talking about the Hispanic oh, the Chamber of Commerce. Chamber of Commerce. Oh. At that point, it was called the Ibero. Ibero American Chamber of Commerce. And yes. Jose Antonio Font came to you, and you were part of a group at the beginning. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. And uh, Antonio. They came to you. What, what happened? Uh, he came to me, and said, "Angel, we need uh, all the Hispanic businessmen to join the camera and help us as much as possible." I said, "Jose, I do everything possible to help you." So. I work with Jose, he, he passed away, as you know. Uh, and um, uh, then they elect me uh, chairman of the, of the uh, Greater American Chamber of Commerce. It was very good days. We had a very good time with all the Hispanics, uh, with Eduardo Perdomo, 
which is uh, a grandfather to uh, Shannon. The Greater Hispanic Chamber of Commerce has helped so many small businesses, and you've had so much success. What advice would you give to an immigrant that comes here trying to start their own business? Well, it's if, if what I just said. I mean, if you uh, look at what you want to do and uh, don't go at it uh, with a pen, without a pen in your pocket. You've got to have some money saved to uh, get into something. I don't care how much it is, and you can start in a small, how small can you start? There's no limit how more, uh, small can you start. But if you have the energy to work hard and the determination to get there, you get there. This is the great thing about this country. I mean, this is the only country in the world that I know of that you can do that. And they tell me how tough it is today. It's not tougher today than it was back then. Same thing. You just have to have the determination and the will to do it. That's my opinion. How, how important do you think minority businesses are for the economy? They're very important. Uh, they are growing. You can see uh, all over the country that there's quite a few minority business. And um, I don't keep up with as much now as I did before. Because when I was the Chamber of Commerce and the Haka, I knew most of the uh, uh, minority business on the East area anyway. And, um, uh, but it's not enough of them. I think uh, the minority, you can see them, um, uh, um, African Americans and Hispanics, uh, they, they could do a lot better. So the 60s, the 70s, now I remember you when I dressed up my son as a Gallego in the festival, the Hispanic festival, and you used to put together, or you used to uh, uh, support the Spanish float, and I think sometimes you actually rode with the float. Did you? Even my wife got dresses up as a Spanish gypsy and rode and rode the, the the float. I support all the Hispanic things. Right now, we still belong to the Ibero-American Chamber of Commerce. You know, had with the new mayor and how he stimulated growth, your growth in particular as well. Yeah, I mean, there is a uh, um, lot of stories about Miriam Berry, but I think he was uh, a good person. I think he was a, uh, a good mayor. Uh, he had the suppers and downs we know about, but uh, my uh, opinion of him doesn't change. I think he did great for the minority contractors. He came to, to our meetings a lot of times, and uh, uh, he, helped, uh, uh, he helped us uh, uh, as much as he could. It's a limit to what the mayor can do. You, you did know? a lot of work with the city. At that. Oh yes, yes, he did a lot of work with like, the city. Like for instance, the projects that we would. Do oh, today. we do a lot of pavement work back uh, back there. Very jobs with the with the city all the time, and uh, he can give you a job, but he can support you, and and uh, and I think this mayor that we have now is just as well a nice person and a good mayor that uh, I think is helping everybody. Well, you've worked on so many well-known places in Washington, D.C. What would you say is your favorite construction project? <clears throat> if I had to say my favorite construction project was the Chunk Kennedy and Robert Kennedy Green site, that was something deep, deep in me. We moved, actually, if you remember, you don't remember, but uh, Chunk Kennedy was very temporary, in a temporary grave. We, since we constructed the, uh, constructed a new grave, we went out there at night with the family in a crane and pick up the casket from the temporary grave and put it on the new grave. And that to me, and uh, I was chuckling there, the whole family was there uh, watching this down. And Bob Kennedy was there, which then we buried him out there uh, in a few months or a few years. Or a few years, we buried them out there on the, the other side. So uh, that is, I think, I, most of them are good, like the uh, National Art Gallery, the Holocaust. Uh, the Holocaust, is, by the way, is the last stone job the Ruben and Janeiro did. Is, are those the golden era of Ruben and Janeiro, the 80s? I would say so, yes, era. yes. This is why we started the company here. We figured that Washington, D.C. would be the place to start a business. Not only Washington, but you got the federal government, Virginia and Maryland. Uh, uh, for a construction, this is one, to me, that's why I started the company here. I figured this would be the place where we could grow. Your uh, asphalt plant was center field, wasn't it? <laughs> the asphalt plant, it was a uh, really, um, 
why did I go into asphalt, being a stone man, a construction man, and down bridges, and down, how do I go into asphalt? Before me, was Carson and Groove and Corton and Chance. And they get a stone job, and then they do whatever they, uh, the, they use my price, and then they do whatever they want with it. So I said, I got to do something about this. If it has asphalt to work, I want to be able to do asphalt. And it happens that in North P Street, there was this old plant. And they had a sign for sale. Next year, I see the same sign. A year later, I went out there and looked at it. How much you want for a million dollars? I said, gee, but I cracked it. I said, yeah, the same price. Mm -hmm. And my company had grown. Now I could borrow the money. So I borrowed, went to the bank, borrowed the money, bought the plant. The plant was a piece of chunk, really, old plant. So we bought it. We got a bulldozer, got all the old plant out of there, and put a new plant there. And then, those guys that had the asphalt work, that they uh, uh, negotiate with my uh, price and then give it to somebody else, then I would negotiate with them about doing the asphalt work for me. I know you sold your company to Fort Myer. The, the, the plant, not the property, the plant. And, and your relationship with Fort Myer is a, is a friendly one. You sure. Jose uh, must have a lot of common because he's from down the road from where you're. you're <laughs> <laughs> He's, uh, I don't know, less than 100 miles away. He's from the north of Portugal. Exactly. Yeah. So could you tell us you, how, how did you work with Carl, Carl Jones? What were the experiences with Carl Jones? Carl Jones, we, him and I n never did too much work together, but uh, we were on a friendly basis, and uh, uh, we would go to the meetings, the contractors' meeting, uh, uh, and I always found him to be a, a good businessman and a good, fair businessman, even though we didn't actually, he didn't do work for me much or I didn't do much. Maybe if he had a, a, some work that I was closer to my job, and he, maybe he'd say, Angel, why don't you do this work or something like that? But it was very minute. And you, it, it, t tell us about the volume of contracts that you gave, subcontracts. Once you were that big, you, you provided a lot of work for smaller firms. Uh, I, just about every, everything that they could do, uh, uh, um, like uh, Perdomo, uh, Perdomo Associates, uh, uh, they did a lot of work uh, uh, with me. Uh, uh, Eduardo and I always got along uh, like glue from the beginning, from day one. And the fact of the matter, we became uh, uh, his. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> his, his daughter married my son, and my son married his daughter. And, and uh, uh, his young girls were working in my office. We were wonderful uh, people, really wonderful family. Well, after decades of work and success, you still keep working. You're still involved in your business. What, what inspires you to continue to do so? Well, it, it's hard to not to do nothing. You know, it's really harder to uh, harder to do nothing than to work. You can only play so much golf and That's so right. much tennis. That's <laughs> right. So to have something to keep you occupied is, I think, is an, is is very necessary for us anybody that retires. I don't care what you do as long you gotta keep busy. Uh, I'm sure you heard other people saying the same thing that the worst thing you could do retire do nothing. It's a good way to die quick. Yeah. Uh, well, one more time, so t if you can tell us about the relationship with Jose, with Joe Rodriguez. We competed, we worked together like a good uh, uh, businessman. Uh, Joe and I, we always, uh, he could come to my word and I usually could count on his word. And we did a lot of work together. Uh, sometimes um, he had too much work and uh, sub some work to me and vice versa. Uh, at that time, when, when, when my plant was, was uh, uh, when, they bought, when, when they purchased my plant, uh, uh, we, uh, we were just as big as they were. So when they sold them the plant, they really got a clear feel to, on, on Washington, D.C., and then they took uh, uh, the space that I was using, and, and, uh, and they really was good for them, good business. Uh, so is different. it fair to say between you and Fort Myer, you've paved all of Washington, D.C.? At that time, yes, pretty much, pretty much. Maybe you had a, uh, an occasional guy from Virginia do a little job, but we did pretty much control pretty much of the paper when we both were uh, together. 
So paving, stonework. And general construction. You, you, did, you built this building, didn't you? We did this building with my company, GNC Construction Corporation. In 1983 is when we built this building. And memorable construction uh, projects that you can remember? Oh, uh, the Wolf Trap, the Feline Center, the, the theater. We, we were general contractors on that job. The Metro, the Metro Station uh, in Forest Church, Virginia, general contractor, we did that. The remodeling or rehab of the 14th Street Bridge, which was federal government, uh, we did as general contractors. We talking about $20 million jobs in, in that area. Yeah. First and last name, if you could say it. My name's Jose Rubin. And your title at the company? I'm Vice President of Operations at Espina Paving and Plant Manager at Rubin and Janeiro Asphalt. Can you start off telling us a little bit how you got into the family business? Well, I've been in it my whole life. Um, I started going to visit my dad when I was a little kid. Uh, it was pretty much the only time I could see him because He'd go to work before I woke up and would come home after I went to bed. So uh, my first memories of working at Ruben and Gennaro and in the family business are being three and four years old, sitting on a loader's operator's lap and thinking that the plant was the coolest thing in the world. Um, then I grew up and you know went to high school and college, and it was uh, always my dream to work in the family business. There was never anything else I really wanted to do. Uh, so when I graduated college on Friday, I was at work on Monday. Um, at the asphalt plant. And Did you go to college and specialize in construction I, management? Not construction or? management, business management and finance. Um, I went to University of Tennessee, spent a few years down there uh, picking up some skills that'll carry me through the rest of my life. But honestly, most of the stuff I learned was on the job. Um, the first few years I was drinking through a fire hose trying to learn as much as I could, uh, trying to learn how the plant works, how it, you know, efficient it can be if you change things here and there and then having to kind of implement some of the technology advances that I learned in my generation into the old generation that the plant was existing in um, was kind of fun because it, you could see how things would change and how they would make speed go faster and make it run a little more efficiently. But uh, they didn't really listen to me for a few years. I was a grunt in the beginning. So um, I really just had to put the shovel in the ground and, and figure it out from the ground up, which looking so, back was some of the most fun times. <laughs> so. What we really want to know here is memories of your grandfather and what did you learn from him and what was it wow. like uh, growing up in this um, successful construction family? Well, it was, uh, you know, it was great to, as a kid, you don't really, I guess, appreciate it, you know, because it's just kind of life. You grow up and you see your granddad and you know he does this work in this big office and you get to play here with the trucks. For me, it was fun playing with the trucks as a kid. But as you grow up, you start to kind of, really figure out how much it took for him to get where he started to where he is now and appreciate the fact that when I was born I didn't have to have the same difficulties as he did because he did what he did and you, you start to like I said appreciate it respect it a little more and it's nice to be able to I mean I have many memories of telling people um, you know my grandfather's the story of the true rags to riches American success story you know he came here with nothing and through hard work, as you guys heard in your interview, that's really all it takes is in a country that will allow you to have the opportunity to, to grow and to build a business. So to have that example of someone who went from the bottom to the top um, really gives you a sense of gratification in the fact that I'm not starting on the bottom. I'm starting a little bit above where he did. So you take the values that you learned from your grandfather and apply it to your life now, and it kind of just makes me who I am today. How proud are you of your grandfather? That's hard to quantify in yeah. one statement, what you know. You? Um, I'm proud that he was the guy that he was to me growing up. You know, he was never a, a, a boss to me or he was always a grandfather. He was never anything other than that. And, you know, I remember the little... Did he encourage you to go into the business? Absolutely. Well, of course he did. Um, everybody did, you know, my dad did, my mom did, my grandfather, everybody. And it was kind of, I don't want to say expected of me, but at the same way, I never said no. It was something I wanted to do. So, so what's the future of Ruben and Janine? Sky's the limit, you know. Um, the, the, you know, we're, we're kind of getting back into Washington, D.C. We left for a little while, and then when the plant got put back up, we're kind of reinserting ourselves down there. 
So it's a matter of, um, you know, just trying to figure out the different landscape and how DC works now. It's a little different than it used to be. Um, and, and, you know, just you have to keep waking up early every morning, going to work, and like he said, pay your bills, try to make a dollar, and do a good job. And what are you working on now? Any special projects? Um, we are paving the Capitol tonight, actually, one of the streets inside of the secure area. Um, we have done a bunch of streets out there. Um, we're doing several projects with Espina Paving that also our asphalt plant feeds that company as well. Um, we just finished a big project at Fort Belvoir. It's about 20,000 tons of asphalt. Um, we just finished another big project um, uh, in Richmond for another defense logistics agency. So uh, it's a matter of just being competitive and trying to stay competitive is the hard part um, and, and trying to get the proper jobs that feed our company.